The concept of ascension. Introduction. The concept of ascent is found in all mystery religions and describes spiritual progress. The symbolic ascent through the levels and layers of the cosmic egg towards its cosmic center. There are also, however, a number of symbols used to indicate this symbolic ascent and each symbol has a meaning. We will concentrate in this video on the meaning of the concept of ascension and explore the meaning of the symbols used to describe ascension in another video. The symbols of ascension covering spire ascent up a hill or mountain see also a video mountain or hill ascending in a whirlwind Ascent on a horse, which may have wings like Pegasus. See also our video on the symbolism of the horse. Ladders, stairs and steps. Including the sorts of spiral stairs depicted by William Blake in Jacob's Ladder. Rope, threads, chains and cords. Not forgetting the faker and the Indian rope trick. Both a symbol of ascent and a magic trick. Wings and flight, including swans, see a video, and geese, see the video. Many myths, nursery rhymes and stories have also attempted to capture this concept and its symbolism. Jack and the Beanstalk being a much loved example, a story published in the UK in 1734, but said to go back several thousand years. The Story Jack, a poor country boy, trades the family cow for a handful of magic beans, which grow into an enormous beanstalk, reaching up into the clouds. Jack climbs the beanstalk and finds himself in the castle of an unfriendly giant. Outwitting the giant, Jack is able to retrieve a bag of gold, an enchanted goose that lays golden eggs, and a magic golden harp that plays and sings by itself. The giant tries to catch Jack by descending the beanstalk, but Jack chops the beanstalk down in the nick of time. The Ascension of Jesus In non-mystic traditional Christian teaching, ascension is taken to be literal. In essence, Jesus physically, rather than symbolically, departs from earth by rising into heaven. In Christian art, the ascending Jesus is often shown without wings, simply rising up into the air. But this may be because the New Testament accounts 
do not describe how this happens. The ascension told in Luke 24.50 uses the word carried. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. The account in Acts 1.9 uses the words taken up. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. The Gospel of John, however, makes no mention of a literal ascension. Instead, the main reference is symbolic. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. In other words, when his higher spirit, the Son, descends the levels and layers to become a human form in all of us. And when a person dies, the higher spirit, Son, symbolically, ascends the levels and layers of the cosmic egg to return to the centre. See Mother, Father and Son video. On the other hand, if one is on the spiritual path, this ascension takes place whilst one is alive, and the key transformations occur during the purification stage after rebirth. The Gnostic Gospels provide a much clearer view of what is meant and align with the meaning in other mystic movements. From a homily for the Feast of the Ascension by the Reverend Stephen Marshall. The Gnostics teach that the promises of Jesus concerning the resurrection and ascension of human beings are indeed imminent, but spiritual and interior rather than physical and external in nature. To the Gnostic, Ascension is an interior ascent of transcendence into higher states of consciousness, described as realms existing beyond this physical world. The character of the Ascension depends entirely upon the direction and goal of the Ascension, which for the Gnostic is the return to the light the centre. In the Chaldean oracles, this ascent in consciousness depends on the transcendence of the physical body. Believe thyself to be out of body, and so thou art, for divine things are not accessible to mortals who fix their minds on body. It is for those who strip themselves naked who speed aloft to the height. Nakedness as a Symbol It is this ability to forget, as it were, that one even has a physical or material body that is thus key in achieving ascension. One ascends in one's mind and out-of-body experiences and near-death experiences both achieve this state. Symbolically, one is naked. Clothes are a symbol of the physical material realm. As such, if one is without clothes, one is pure spirit. If one is a beautiful honey or amber colour, even better, as both honey and amber are symbols of spiritual energy, similar to wool. See our video of wool and sheep. This focus on transcendence of the material body does not mean a despising or self-destructive denial of the flesh. From a homily for the Feast of the Ascension by the Reverend Stephen Marshall. Such denial is really another form of attachment and enslavement a negative attachment in such a case. We are warned 
in the Gospel of Philip, Fear not the flesh, nor love it. If you fear it, it will gain mastery over you. If you love it, it will swallow and paralyze you. So forms of sensory deprivation will help enormously in achieving this form of ascension. And by looking at it in this way, we find that every mystic movement, even those attached to some existing religion, such as Judaism, Christianity, Buddhism and Islam, is in agreement. The Ridge Veda, translated by Wendy Doniger, among all things that fly, the mind is the swiftest. It is the mind that flies and ascends. The body, such that it is, is left behind. When people do not die, they return to their body, bringing revelations, each one more profound than the last, because they rise higher each time. From a homily for the Feast of the Ascension, by the Reverend Stephen Marshall. The point here is that the transcendence of the body must be accomplished without being ashamed of the flesh. Jesus makes a metaphor to the image of little children dancing naked and free. For the Gnostics, the ascent is not some dour hatred and fear of the flesh, but a joyous and ecstatic transcendence of the limitations of bodily consciousness. If we symbolically strip ourselves naked, if we relinquish a form, then in our ascent we may be caught up in ecstasy, which translated from the Greek means being outside of oneself. Ecstasy means to be out of the body, and the system of which it is a manifestation. It means freedom. Yet the Gnostic experience of ascension is not simply an out-of-body experience. There are a plethora of accounts of people who have experienced travelling out of the body or journeying on the astral, who have been meditating or journeying for years, but who have not returned to the light. These are modalities of transcendence through which individuals may experience the enlightenment or gnosis. But the modalities in themselves cannot guarantee it, nor are they a viable substitute for the genuine experience. The spiritual ascension requires a capacity for gnosis, an orientation towards the mysteries of the interior life and the descent of a grace from on high. We must have that within us that can ascend and return to the light before the light stream can come to us and take us up. To have this within us requires a fervent desire for transcendence and freedom. And in Christianity, this is what was meant by the Holy Ghost. And it is not ours to direct. It is delivered through grace after we have been through purification. The State of Initiates During Ascent What effect does ascension have on a person? The process of ascent is said to change the nature of the person going through this in a quite fundamental way. Hazrat Inayat Khan, himself a mystic musician, described this transformation in a book entitled The Art of Being and Becoming. Hazrat Inayat Khan, The Art of Being and Becoming. He develops a bird-like nature and floats in the sphere of imagination, quite unconscious of the earth and its surrounding. He seeks the society of those of a like interest, just as a bird would be with a bird, and makes his home on high in the world of thought 
as the nest of a bird is in the top of a tree. See the bird video. He advances still further and becomes as an insect, admiring the imminence of God in nature and absorbing rapture from divine wisdom, just like a bee gathering honey from flowers. See the bee video. Then, like a moth, he concentrates on and hovers round the light until his self is sacrificed in the vision of his love. See the moth video. Eventually, Khan says that he becomes like a stone. Neither climate, nor day, nor night can make any difference to him. Neither sorrow nor joy can touch him. He becomes free of all effects. And eventually, he arrives to a condition where he sojourns in a star, planet, the moon and sun.